Hi Capricorn, welcome to August. This is Teresa from Tarot by T. And before I get started on your reading, I want to call in some good energy. And I want to say thank you to all who have um, subscribed to my channel. If you're new, welcome. And um, for those who have taken the time out to comment, thank you for the feedback. I really appreciate hearing your comments, reading your comments. And for those who've ordered readings, thank you for your support. I've really enjoyed working with you guys. So let's see what's coming up for, for Capricorn for the month of August. I hope you guys survived the eclipses in July, especially the Cancer eclipse that was opposing your sun. And then the, uh, the Leo, or the Aquarius, I mean. Um, so let's see what's happening with Capricorn. We have a new moon solar eclipse in Leo on August 11th. And we have a full moon in Pisces, which is favorable to your sign, on August 26th. So let's see. What does the card say? What does Capricorn need to know about love and relationships for the month of August? What does Capricorn need to know about love and relationship for the month of August? May only the highest forces be present to ensure that the truth be told. Okay, let's see. Two of Pentacles. The Knight of Pentacles. The Justice card. The Three of Wands. The King of Cups, the Seven of Wands, the Queen of Cups, the Five of Pentacles, the Hierophant, the Four of Pentacles. Okay, let me see what we got here. All right, so you start the month out, you're juggling a lot. You might be working two jobs or you just have a lot of irons in the fire. You're doing a lot of stuff. You're trying to manage it all. Because um, this is a card, Knight of Pentacles. You know, that's an earth sign. And that could represent you. You're working to build. You're trying to build something up. You're trying, you know, you're doing this. You're working really hard. You've got a goal. Capricorns always have a goal. They always have an agenda. They're always working towards something. So you're trying to maintain the balance, you know. You might be trying to make a decision of where to focus your energy because you have a lot of irons in the fire and it's like, you know, can I keep this up? I mean, at some point I'm gonna to have to choose where I put my energy. And you're really focused on, you know, financial security. You might be worried about money a little bit. Like, do I have enough? Am I making enough? Do I need to make more? Um, so, justice in the past. You may have recently experienced um, a favorable outcome to either a legal situation or if you applied for a job or some type of um, partnership matter, it worked out in your favor. A decision was made in your favor. Justice can also mean karma, favorable karma. So something may have recently worked out in a favorable way because of whatever you've done in the past, like it's like your karmic reward. You've done, you've done the right thing or you handled something in a, in a good way and now um, you're being rewarded. Justice also means it relates to this balance of the two of pentacles. You know, you have to balance things, you, but you're learning how to do that. You're learning how to juggle different multiple projects with ease. Um, and with the Three of Wands here in the recent past, you're starting to see results. So you put a lot of work and energy into something, maybe a relationship. But if um, I feel like if you're dealing with a new relationship, it's a it could be an Earth sign. But it could also you also have this King of Cups up here, so it could be a Water sign too. Um, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. The Earth could be. Um, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, like yourself. But I feel like this energy is more um, your energy, that you're just starting a new, you have this new plan that you're, 
you're just working really hard. This is the card of the hard worker. You know, you're, you have a goal and you're just willing to come to work every day and work all hours. And um, So if you're not in a relationship right now, or even if you are, you might be neglecting your loved ones a little bit because you have so much work to do. Um, but your work is paying off because you have the three of wands. So you're starting to see the results. You're gonna, And if you haven't, you will. Um, things are starting to happen. You might be working with two other people. If it's a business, if it's a career thing, there may be some type of partnership that involves two other people. And you're working as part of a team to produce something, to, to manifest something. Um, now, coming up, so even if you have a partnership goal, you know, like in a romantic relationship, because with Capricorn, everything's a business transaction, even love. <laughs> um, you're starting to see results. You're going to start to see results there too. And this King of Cups could be in your future. The King of Cups, it could be a water sign, but it could also be someone, I mean, and it doesn't have to be the sun sign. It could be, you know, a water rising or moon sign. A person could have a moon in water or rising or water sign rising. So that's why I don't always go by the signs with the cards. I, I go by the personalities. So the King of Cups, the personality, is someone who's very compassionate, very gentle, very quiet, someone who's calm in a crisis. So if there's all kinds of um, drama going on, the King of Cups knows how to calm everyone down. He's a good counselor. Uh, he's very compassionate. He cares about helping others. He really feels for the people. And he has a lot of deep feelings, deep emotion. But he doesn't always show it. So there could be someone around you that has, that may care about you, but you may not know, you may not even know it because he keeps his feelings tightly hidden, very buried, you know. He would never even tell you. I mean, you have to kind of look, find out with subtle clues because, um, uh, the king only reveals his feelings when he feels safe. When he feels like he won't be rejected. So, and you have the seven of wands here coming up. Which means that you might be, um, you might be having to set boundaries with someone. Um, maybe someone has been a little too needy in your life and you're having to, you know, draw the line somewhere. Or you have to fight for what you believe, what you want, and what you believe in. So if there's someone that you have your eye on, there could be some competition around this person. And you need to um, battle the competition. But you you have the upper hand. You see all these wands? You're standing above the rest. So if it's a career situation where you have to be competitive, they can't touch you. You have the, the, the better qualifications or the more talent. If it's a romantic situation, you're the favored one. So if you're dating someone and he and the person's dating other people or thinking, you know, you are the favored one. You're the person they really want to be with. Um, and maybe you're dating someone, either you're trying to figure out, you know, who do I really want or they are, you know. But at some point, that decision is going to have to be made. Now, you have the Queen of Cups here. And this is in your negative thinking sector. So you might be, maybe you're not trusting your intuition. Queen of Cups is someone who's very intuitive, very spiritual. Also as sensitive, like the king. Um, but these two people are soulmates. They're made from the same cloth. You know, they're both very compassionate, very spiritual, very sensitive, very, um, you know, tender. They have tender feelings, tender emotions. They get hurt very easily. So... Either you're, um, you maybe you're afraid of being vulnerable too. So you're both kind of like, you may want to get together, but you're both afraid of rejection. So neither one of you is um, making a, approaching the other. I'm getting that feeling. Um, and it's possible that the person you're interested in, because you have the five of pentacles here in your environment, this person may have um, may feel a little bit insecure. Maybe they feel they're not good enough for you, or they don't have enough to offer you. 
Because this is a per card of someone who is struggling financially, who might be feeling depressed. Maybe they're going through a depression. They feel like um, they're out in the cold. Like no one, they just don't fit in. They're not feeling like they would fit into your life or some in some way. And maybe you want, like you're the Hierophant. Maybe you're a little bit stubborn about what you want. Um, with the Hierophant, you know, you may you know you want um, a serious you want a relationship that is traditional. You know, Capricorns are very traditional and very conservative. You're not the person. You're not going to settle for um, less than, let's say, marriage or commitment. You're not going to just. Um, you're you're very sensitive to being used. So you wouldn't like just be like friends with benefits with someone. You know, for a long time at least. At some point, you would want a commitment. Even if you started out that way. Um, so maybe this person's feeling like they have nothing to offer you. Or they, they're not good enough for you. So they're afraid to approach you. Um, in a business situation, you could be dealing with either government or higher education. Or something that has to do with healing, like a hospital. Um, you're dealing with companies. like the cor This is like a corporate environment. And um, you're, you're work you might be partnering with someone through some type of corporate connection or, or business connection. Um, the Four of Pentacles, you need to be, watch the controlling aspect of this because sometimes with the Four of Pentacles, one of you could be too controlling or you're trying to control the outcome and you have to kind of go with the flow. The other way that the Four of Pentacles can work is either you or your partner doesn't understand that you have to give to receive. Like if you're just sitting there waiting for someone to approach you, or if they're just sitting there, they have to do something. They have to give. You know, maybe they're not willing to give. They're afraid to give their heart, or they're afraid to spend their money. Um, and so maybe they have a poverty consciousness, or a scarcity mentality, and they're afraid to spend money. And so it may not make you feel valued if they're not spending on you or something. Or you feel like you're always the one spending the money. So um, one way or another, the Four of Pentacles is about releasing control, letting go. Don't hold on. You can't hold on to something. Because, you know, if you're in a relationship and you're, you're afraid to let go of it, and if the, per unless the, if the person loves you, you can't lose them no matter what. And if they don't care about you, all the holding on is going to make a difference. You're still going to lose them. You can't hold on to someone who doesn't want to be there. So release that pressure of, you know, control. And I know Capricorns sometimes, um, they can be a little bit controlling at times because they're so organized and they want everything to be, you know, just right. So I think you'll get you'll have a better relationship if you can release control um, and just let things happen. Let things happen naturally and in their own time. You know, you can't plan your whole... You, sometimes you just can't plan things. Sometimes the universe is sloppy <laughs> and it just, you know, doesn't follow a pattern. So let's see what the um, astrology has to say. So you've got this new moon in your 8th house, and you have Jupiter in the 11th, and Neptune in the 3rd. So if you're signing any contracts with Neptune in the 3rd, now is not a good time to sign contracts. It could be too much, um, too much obscurity right now, like you're not really sure what's going on, everything is very vague, you know. If someone wants you to sign a contract and it's vague, don't do it, especially with Mars and Mercury retrograde. Wait till September. Now, the eighth house has to do with other people's money, the resources that you get from others, the money that your partner earns if you're in a marriage or a relationship. But it's also the, uh, the house of intimacy. And it's the house of confronting your demons. It's the house of transformation. So you have an opportunity with this new moon in Leo, and Mercury is conjunct this new moon. So... It's really about communication. But you have an opportunity to connect with someone 
on a very intimate level where through communication where you really confide in each other you're like your best friend and you're like I can tell him everything I can tell her anything she understands me he gets me you know that kind of thing you can have that now this new beginning as long as you don't try to uh, be too controlling it's really a good time to open up and really express your feelings you have Pluto in the first house so Pluto is changing how you see yourself, how the world sees you. You're coming into your power. So you have to wield it wisely. And you have to communicate. You have to learn the art of communication to get your needs met. Um, and with Jupiter in the A, uh, no wait, you have Jupiter in the 11th. That's a card, that's a, it's, give, it's bringing you luck in terms of manifesting a dream. So if you've been working hard toward a goal, you can achieve it. You will achieve it. You will be rewarded for your hard work. As long as you avoid some of the pitfalls that I just said about Neptune, you know. In communication, make sure everything, you read the fine print. Everything is spelled out before you sign. Then you'll be okay. Otherwise, you might have some problems. So August 26th is the full moon in Pisces. And that is happening in your third and ninth house again. It's the travel houses, it's the communication house. Something is coming to completion by the end of August. It could be um, a communication or a marketing project, something involving the internet, something involving global reach, long distance travel, teaching, learning, higher education. You might be finishing up some type of educational program or some degree program. Um, you might even be teaching because you have the hierophant here. That sometimes can be the teacher. You have wisdom to share. Uh, truths are going to come out. So, you, so if there's anything obscured right now, like you don't know, everything's kind of like behind a fog, by the end of the month, it will be revealed with the full moon. And you have Saturn is in your first house with Pluto. Pluto is trying, is squaring Venus. And Venus is in your tenth. So there could be some power struggles at work. Um, you may have to deal with, well, you're, you're going to be working on a creative project with Venus in the 10th, but there could be someone that tries to bully, and I don't know, comes on the scene, you might have to deal with, with a bully, with a powerful figure, or you might be that powerful figure, so tone it down, if you're going to be, don't be too bossy with Pluto squaring Venus, <laughs> because you could have some kind of uh, power struggle with a work project if you come on too strong. You have to, you know, let everyone speak their piece. Uranus is um, conjunct the North Node in Leo. Or, no, it's not conjunct, it's squaring the North Node in Leo. So there's a little tension. Uranus in your fifth house. <laughs> you could be meeting someone out of the blue while you're working, you know, while you're involved in a creative project. It could bring romance to your life or it could bring an unexpected project that allows you to express your your talent and your creativity um, and since it's connected to it the north node it's kind of like a fatal meeting like a faded not fatal faded meeting or a faded connection something happens that's just destiny and it's going to help you to find find the right path it's going to propel you, like once you start working on this project, you're going to feel like, okay, this is what I should be doing. And it may come out of the blue. And that could also apply to romance, too, because the fifth house is the house of romance, children, um, creative self-expression, fun, you know, the things that you do that you enjoy, things you do for fun. So you should be, um, with Uranus there, anything could happen. You could meet someone out of the blue while you're working on it, while you're out having fun. Or doing something creative, or working with kids. You know, you're you're walking around with kids and doing something. You're at a party, and you meet someone. Uh, if you're not involved in a relationship, so um, either way, I keep my eye out for that King of Cups. I think you could have the potential to meet a soulmate, either through work. It, it could be a friend. It could be a friend that turns into a lover. Or it could be someone that you want your work. You start out working with, 
and it's some type of partnership, and then all of a sudden you do, it develops into something more. Or you're doing something creative together. You're enjoying creativity in some way. So that's my forecast for August, Capricorn. I hope this reading has been a help to you, and um, I wish you much luck and love and success in August, and I will talk to you again next month. Okay, bye now.